So I want to talk about information theory for a little bit because we need that to help us understand the splitting criteria for decision trees. Now the information from observing the occurrence of an event is the number of bits needed to encode the probability of the event. If the event has probability p, we need negative log 2 of p bits. So if you have a fair coin, then, um, and, you, and you see that it's landed on heads, that gives you one bit of information because the probability is one half, so the coin is fair, and then you get negative log two of one half, which is one bit of information. If you have an event with probability one, that doesn't give you any bits of information when you see it happen, because you know the event's going to happen anyway, because it happens with probability one. So there's no information from seeing it happen. Okay, if we had many events with, with a set of probabilities given in that, that vector right there, um, what is their mean information? Okay, what's the average information from seeing um, events with these probabilities? And the answer is, uh, it looks like that. Okay, so just using the definition of expectation here, it's, you know, each outcome weighted by its probability of, of happening. Put in the definition of uh, information there that I gave you on the last slide, and that defines entropy. Okay. Now, if there are only two events, so it's just a single coin flip, and the probabilities are p and 1 minus p, so heads and tails, uh, then the entropy looks like this. So if the probabilities are 1 half, 1 half, so uh, fair coin, then the entropy is what? Well, if we see the coin land on heads, that's 1 bit. If we see the coin land on tails, that's 1 bit. And so the average is 1 bit. Okay, so we knew that. Uh, however, if the probabilities are very uneven, right, the, if the coin is, is heavily biased, then the entropy is actually very low, okay? So very, very biased coin, the entropy is low. Now, this actually agrees with our sort of mm, colloquial, the way, we, the way we normally think about entropy, just colloquially. Okay, so entropy is... Um, Think about like the amount of chaos in the world. Like if you spill your coffee, then you've increased the amount of entropy in the world. Like the coffee wants to distribute it equally, distribute itself equally <laughs> um, along all of uh, along the whole surface, right? Whereas um, you know, uh, on the flip side, if you have you know a bucket of sand, uh, sorry, if you have if you're at the beach and there's there's sand, and if you take that sand and put it into a bucket you're actually decreasing the entropy of the world, right? So I, I just want to point out that this, this language, entropy, um, agrees with our own intuition of, of the word entropy, right? So increasing entropy means increased chaos and even spread, right? Whereas if you're decreasing entropy, then, um, then that means that, you're, that, you're, um, that things can be very uneven. Okay, so like you, you've built a sand castle in the sand that, that decreases the entropy of the world. Like humans actually tend to decrease the entropy of the world because we organize things. Okay, so um, yeah, just to, just to put that intuition back on the board, right? If the probabilities are one half, one half, the entropy is maximized because it, it's equal. And if the probabilities are very uneven, then um, the entropy is very small. Okay, so I'm going to plot entropy as a function of p for this coin, and as you can see, the fair coin has the largest amount of entropy, and then if the, as the coin becomes more unfair, then the entropy decreases. Okay, so if the probabilities look like this, they're fairly even, um, except for a couple, well, there, there's a value of the entropy for that, and compute it using the formula on this slide a couple slides ago. Uh, and um, if the... Um, if the probabilities look like this and they're very uneven, then the entropy is lower. Okay, so you're, you're probably saying, well, why are we talking about in, uh, information for a decision tree lecture, right? Why is this even relevant? And it's because we want to choose splits in our decision trees that have low entropy. We want to choose splits that are um, that put all of the positives in one leaf and all of the negatives in another leaf. Okay, so where does this definition of information come from, right? Log two p bits, where did that come from? 
And the answer is actually really interesting. Um, so we want to define information so that the information uh, is always non-negative, right? It would be weird if we like learned something and we get negative information, right? That's strange. So information is always non-negative. And um, the information, we, we also want to make sure that the information of an event that happens with probability one is zero, right? We're not getting any information if we know the thing's gonna happen. Okay, the other thing we want to have is that if you have two independent events, then um, seeing them happen together should be the sum of seeing them seeing them separately, right? So the, the information from two independent events should be the sum of their informations. And then also we want the information to be continuous, right? Slight changes in probability should correspond only to slight changes in information. It would be really strange if, if this thing was had jumps in it. It would be really weird. So those are the principles and together they lead to um, the information of you know, p squared. So this is the same thing as like two independent events. Um, that has to equal two times the information uh, of, of one of the two events, right? They're, they're, this, they're equal events. Um, so this just comes from the second principle. And then, um, you know, you can just generalize this argument to say, okay, you had n independent events. So you have p to the n, and then um, you can view that as being like, you know, n times the information of one event, right? Because these events are, are independent. Okay, so we have, we have this. And then from there, um, that means that if, if you look at the information for P, well here, what I've done is taken P to the one in disguise, right? One over M times M, that's just one in disguise. So no, no fancy math there. But then I can bring the M down because of the um, expression at the top of the slide. I can just pull that M down and I get to this. And then, um, just dividing m by both sides, get this expression over here. And then more generally, if you um, take p to, if you take that expression uh, that we had earlier and do p to the n, okay, then we know that the n would come down as well from again the top of the slide, and so we get um, this expression here. So this, of course, would hold for any m, n, and m, which means it holds for all rationals. So all we have to do is just define the information so that this um, property holds for all real values. And so we get um, that the information is defined, that the, the definition of the information, whatever it is, it needs to obey this expression at the bottom. And so here, um, if it if this is true for all positive reals and it's it's continuous, then the functions that do this are negative log. Okay, that's that's what they are. And so we still have to choose the base of the log, and we chose b equals two for bits. So it's bits of information. So flipping a fair coin, again, you get one information one bit of information if it comes up either heads or tails. A bias coin landing on heads with a very high probability. Mm, okay, that's not going to give you that much information. But if you have a biased coin and it lands on heads with a very low probability and you, you see that happen, then that's a lot of information. That's really, that's really interesting. It gives you a lot of information. Okay, so let's go back to the decision tree lecture and we'll show you how uh, information is incorporated into decision tree splitting.